is a ministry of the Capital Assembly, Abuja, Nigeria. This disc is not for sale. For more copies or for further information, please call or send a text to 080-33-116696 or send an email to info at the Capital Assembly of the month is also available free of charge at any of the Capital Assembly services. We look forward to hearing from you. and Victor's story. On this bright October morning, even the trees seemed to wave their arms and hills whispered a song of joy in the breeze. This was no ordinary day. Everyone seemed to have a spring in their steps and all the guests wore beaming smiles from ear to ear. A family at war within itself was finally at peace. Hallelujah. Ngozi and Victor both looked at one another with joy and gladness as they dedicated their firstborn child today. Their story is a story of victory. They had finally received the promise of a child after seven years. Almost everyone had thought it would be impossible for them to have a child again. But God made the difference. Yes, indeed, with God, all things are possible. God had given Ngozi a child after an arduous journey and several miscarriages. God had promised them from his word that he would keep her and the baby throughout the pregnancy. They had stood on his promise. The result was now in Victor's hands. As they dedicated their baby to the glory of God, all that beheld this glorious event could only conclude that with God, all things are possible if you will only believe. What about you? Do you have an idea of greatness in your heart? that has been lingering there for a while? Do you have a dream for a better tomorrow and you sense that it is God speaking to you to believe him for a better life? Are you heartbroken and yet you sense the Holy Spirit telling you to believe that things will change and your broken heart will be mended and you will enjoy life again? We have a God who never seems to stop telling us in our hearts that things can be better than it is now. You may query why you feel like this because you are thankful for where you are now but yet your heart seems to be drawing you to desire more but wait a minute does this sometimes happen to you in certain instances when you dare to reach for more and you ask God to expand your coast like Japheth in the Bible you become scared because you've counted the cost and you know that you don't have the means to achieve the dream but God will not let you off on that and the dream will not go away. So what do you do? Luke 14, 28 to 33 might be speaking to you. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Lest haply, after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going to make war against another king, sitteth not down first, and consulteth whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand? Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage and desireth conditions of peace. So does that mean that you must have all that you need before you build a house, or go to war, or reach out for a better future. 
What does it mean? It means count the cost. I want to put it to you that God expects you to look at what you have in your hand towards a goal that he has put in your heart so that you could come to realize that you cannot make it without his intervention. With God, all things are possible. And likewise, without God, so much is impossible. You may want to build a house and you don't have the funds. You may want to study in the university and you don't have the means right now. You may want to marry and yet you do not have any proposal in sight. You may want to win souls for the Lord and you need to overcome your shyness. The list is endless. So what do you do? Only God can make it happen. Our God, Jehovah, is the God that puts a dream in your heart that you cannot achieve without Him. God is the God that puts a dream in your heart that you can only achieve by His divine provision or ability. You need faith in order to access His divine provision or divine ability or His divine intervention. You need to believe Him. Without faith, you have no access to His grace. Romans 5, 2-3 Says, by whom also we have access by faith into the grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. You need, my friend, to believe that God will make a way where there seems to be no way. You need to believe that he can bring funds into your hand where there seems to be no way. You need to believe that God will heal your heart when you don't know how you'll be able to forgive and move forward. You need to believe that God will give you a wonderful spouse where there seems to be no one in sight. You need to believe that God will give you a child even if you've been trying for so long. You need to believe. You need to believe. Whenever God puts a dream in your heart, you will need faith in order to make it come to pass. If you have faith and take steps of faith, you will come to realize that all things are possible if you can only believe. As you read the Bible, you will meet Hannah who believed God and made a vow. She subsequently had six children after her season of barrenness. You will also meet Abraham whose barren wife gave him a child in his old age. You will also meet a physically weak woman who has suffered a loss of blood and yet had to push through a huge crowd just to touch Jesus. She was made whole. As you read the Bible, Faith will rise up in your heart and you will know that you know that you can make it and your dream can come to pass. As you read the Bible and meditate on his promises, God will speak to your heart day by day and give you steps of faith, which as you take them, you will reach your goal like Ungozi and Victor and like those who made it in the Bible. God is the God that can make a way where there seems to be no way. He will enable you to live that life of holiness. He will give you the strength to forgive. He will enable you to fulfill his will and plans. He can bring food to you in the desert like he did for the children of Israel. He can give you a child no matter the number of miscarriages you have had like he has done for many women. He can give you money to build a house like he has done for many people. He can make you into a fisher of men like he did for fearful Peter. In this new year, God wants you to believe him and your dreams will come to pass. Before he put the dream in your heart, he had already prepared everything you need to achieve the dream. Rise up. It is your time. My name is Tejo Alunge and I welcome you to this month's Disc of the Month. When this tape of the month returns, you will meet Reverend Bob Alunge and listen to the 2006 to 2007 crossover message entitled only believe. We'll be right back after the break.
soon. Welcome back. You open your Bibles with me to Mark chapter number 5, verse 21, and we'll read all the way down. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came there. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him. My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, If I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, and yet you can ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some men came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler. Your daughter is dead. Why bother the teacher anymore? Ignoring what they said, Jesus told the synagogue ruler, Don't be afraid. Just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid. Only believe. Be not afraid. Only believe. God handles the impossible. He does not shy away from difficult situations. And it was a difficult situation that brought this man, Jairus, a ruler of the synagogue. If the Bible had been a little bit incomprehensive about the matter, then perhaps we would be given room to speculate about the urgency of the matter. But the Bible does tell us that she was at the point of death. There is nothing as urgent as being at the point of death. And I don't know about you, but I have gotten to certain points in my life where if God didn't move then, eh, got into situations where the need for the intervention of God is no longer a need or a necessity. It becomes an urgency. An urgency. And I can sense that there are people at the sound of my voice today who sense that same feeling of urgency in one dimension or department of your life or the other. Where it seems as if time is closing in. When it looks as if opportunities are about to fly by. And you'll never get them again. Urgency. Jairus or Jairus as some people call him. Made sure he communicated accurately to God. 
He didn't come to God with his daughter at the point of death and then come to Jesus and say, come and heal my daughter. She's at home sick. No, she said to Jesus, she is at the point of death. In other words, he expressed the urgency of the requirement for his intervention. So Jesus did know that. This was a good thing. As ruler of the synagogue, famous in the city for his good works. He was a tither. He was in covenant with Jehovah. He was a good man. The Bible says that as soon as he spoke to Jesus, Jesus began to follow him. He looked as if things were on an upturn. Maybe some of you cried unto the Lord and it seemed as if there was a move in your business. It seemed as if God intervened in your health. It seemed as if things were picking up in your chambers. It seemed as if somebody was showing an interest in marrying you. It seemed as if that debt was going to be cancelled. It seemed as if the landlord was going to bring down the rent. It seemed as if Jesus began to follow. He began to follow. Not only did Jesus follow, but you've got to understand the circumstances around it. The Bible says, and many, you know what they were referring to, spectators. People who could sense that something miraculous was about to happen. And they wanted to see it. They wanted to be there when the miracle happened. They wanted to be around to witness it and so on. The Bible says, and many followed. So this was not just a private intervention. Now it was public. Now there was so much at stake. Now you thrust yourself onto faith. Committed yourself into the hand of God. You have shared a testimony in church. You have made a declaration and everybody knows who you are. You have set a date for your departure. I don't know what it is. But now it's no longer a private issue. It's public. And Jesus went with you. Mahapole, this is high. And then the story changes and another story begins in the urgency of the situation the urgency the Bible says Jesus began to follow and they were heading for his miracle but on the way towards his miracle Jesus stops he stopped because of another person a woman with an issue of blood we don't even know her name at least Jairus has a name the only thing that qualifies her is her faith for the Bible says she had said within herself if I may just touch the hem of his garment I will not I could not I might, but I will if I can just touch. That's all I need. And I want you to understand what if I can just touch means to a Hebrew woman with an issue of blood. An issue of blood basically describes in her circumstance an unstoppable menstrual flow. The flow of blood. By the old covenant law, when a woman went into her cycle and was experiencing the flow, she was declared ceremonially unclean. She could not come into the congregation or into the assembly. Anybody who touched her at that time became unclean by virtue of her uncleanness. So when this Hebrew woman said, if I may just touch him, she was really breaking all the rules she was in old covenant terms committing a sin I want that to sink in your spirit she was breaking protocol and she was breaking the rules now people couldn't stop her because many people did not know about the issue of blood but she knew 
and God knew. I don't know how many of you have gotten to points in your life, to points in your walk with God, where you decide that you will take the option and go and find the solution. It's too late. I just have to marry. At least he may be a non-believer, but he has money. He is kind. And he says he loves me. You know what is funny? The Bible says she had suffered many things from many physicians. Each time she tried to walk outside of God, it didn't work. It didn't work. So finally it occurred to her that God now is me and you. I will declare publicly it is either you do something or else. Am I speaking to somebody who touched me? Why did Jesus need the account? It was not just the faith of the woman that made him stop it was the potential for faith in the many that followed that made him stop the bible says when the woman spoke in another account of the same instance the bible says jesus said i haven't seen such faith your faith woman has made you whole your faith not your need your faith and he turned around to let those that were around him hear him declare it that this is what I'm looking for. In other words, God is so desperately seeking those who will come into a position of faith that he is ready to delay but not deny somebody's miracle because of it. He allowed the woman to give her testimony when she had finished he said this is what faith is this is what it means to believe come on touch your neighbor and say believe 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 when the woman finished and while the people were just about to start believing and everybody was just about to start exercising their faith and when everybody was about to start saying within themselves that yes now I catch it now I understand that faith is not faith until you act on it faith is not just information you possess faith is information you can rely on that has enough power to motivate you to act on the basis of that information Bible says she said he says somebody around there was saying oh now I understand it so it's not that somebody has to say to me it's not that somebody has to release me into it the Bible says she said within herself it means if other people around you don't believe believe it means if there's nobody around you to tell you that it can work, simply believe. It means when your situations are saying another story, just believe. While everybody was getting to that point of breakthrough and getting to the point where their faith was, a, was getting charged and Jesus was satisfied that this is it. The Bible says some people showed up and Satan knows how to time this thing to make maximum impact when it seems as if the ministry is turning around, when it seems as if the problems, the domestic situation is being solved, when it seems as if you are beginning to understand one another, when it seems as if your business is turning around, when it seems as if that thing is now finally going through, when it seems as if the contract has now been 
commission to you and is just waiting for the signature when it seems then the news comes from Jairus's house the girl is dead the girl is dead I have come to encourage somebody tonight the same words that Jesus said she dieth not but she sleepeth <laughs> listen to me he said Jairus it does not matter what situation there is I am the resurrection and the life you did not come because you think I'm in your position he says Jairus I need nothing from you there is no charge there is no cost there is no payment that you can give he says Jairus no matter what the time says this is all that I require fear not only believe there is nothing else in the holy scriptures that God will use the word only as a prefix except faith without faith not without holiness without faith it is impossible to please God you can see God and not please God it says without holiness you won't see God you can see him and not please him says without faith you cannot please him no other place that Jesus will say only ladies and gentlemen you may be wrong but Jesus is only believe only that's all I ask if God will have your faith he has your destiny if God will have your faith he has your marriage if God will have your faith he has your business only believe I want you to look at your neighbor eyeball to eyeball and tell him don't be afraid only believe listen to me Jairus it looks like time is not on your side but don't be afraid only believe believe me Jairus it looks as if PDP is not favoring you be not afraid only believe let me tell you something Jairus it may seem as if your turn is done but be not afraid only believe Jairus you may not have the money but be not afraid only believe but he's already on cocaine be not afraid I'm speaking to someone only believe but they've done genetic testing they've done blood testing and it is signed sealed this is my condition be not be not be not you've suffered enough from many physicians be not afraid only believe that's the word of the Lord be not afraid that's all I ask of you. They say it's a fibroid. Be not afraid. It may seem that maybe it's a brain tumor. Be not afraid. Only, only that's all I ask of you. I don't need you to know Genesis to Revelation. One thing I need you to know. Believe. I don't need you to be PhD but I do need you to believe I do need you to believe I do need you to believe how do I believe how do I believe a man came to Jesus his disciples were available Jesus has gone to a mountaintop to pray 
And the Bible says his son was grievously vexed with evil spirits. And the disciples tried their best to cast him out and he didn't go. Then Jesus came down from the mountain and they saw him. And he says, my son is always being tossed into fires and tossed into crazy things because there's a demon that is on the inside of him and he needs to be freed of this great evil. And I don't know why your disciples could not cast him out, but they tried their best. They couldn't try, cast him out and all of that. And Jesus turns and he commands the evil spirit to depart from him. And he turns to his disciples, oh ye of little faith. Faith is the key, eh? But before he cast the demon out, the man was before him. Jesus said to him, do you believe that I can do it? Because that's all he needs. Do you believe? And when it comes to healing, you've come and you've, you're standing in the presence of the solution giver. And he says all he needs is belief. Do you believe? Yes, yes, yes. This man did not say yes. He says, God, I choose to believe. But in case I'm not believing, help my unbelief. I don't know how many people are going to say to God this night, help my unbelief. Help me, Father. There's something on the inside that's still shaking. There's something on the inside that's still worried. There's something on the inside that is not there. Help my unbelief. I want to believe. I want to believe. The Lord says, faith cometh by hearing. So faith cometh. It goes to say, the more you hear, the more you will believe. Hey! So that woman with the issue of blood must have heard a lot about Jesus. And she believed. And so I've come to say to you guys today, please hold on to the word. Hold on to that vision, that hope that you have. Hold on to the prophetic word that this is a year of building. But stay at the feet of his word. That your faith might be built. For that is the only way you can cry unto God and say, God, help my unbelief. What should we believe? Be not afraid, only believe. What should we believe? What should we believe? Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 20. And they arose early in the morning. And they went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O capital assembly and you inhabitants of Abuja. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. But believe his prophets. And so shall you prosper. Believe in God. Believe in God. Believe that God has a desire to improve your situation. Believe that God has a desire to change Nigeria. Believe that God has a plan and an agenda for your life. Believe. That God is interested in your healing. Believe that God has vented interest in your prosperity. Believe that God wants to do this. But beyond that, believe that God anoints men. And when God puts your solution in a place called there, until you go there, you will not find it. Somebody said they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. For every time that God chooses to intervene in the affairs of men, he sends a man. So it's not enough to believe in God, but believe in the solution he sent. Are you with me? I want to ask you to believe in the grace and in the anointing, in the dispensation that God has poured out on this commission. Believe it. Believe in God. But beyond that, believe that God is here. This program brought to you by
soon. booklets called PACES with adequate supervision. The Covenant Academy offers scholarships to students who are orphans and among the needy. We are currently seeking individuals and groups who will sponsor such scholarships. We present the School of Tomorrow, meeting the educational needs of today and the educational values of yesterday and using the technology tomorrow at a price you can afford. Enroll Of hell. 